press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Yeah, let's continue. In the earlier episode, we were discussing that how we can participate in an IPO or a public offer. And at that time, we had discussed that you can participate provided you are having a DMET account. So what you need is a DMET account. Of course, you require a permanent account number and then you can apply for a DMET. So what exactly is this DMET account? This term DMET is actually a short form of dematerialization. Dematerialization is an extremely important reform that has been carried out in India. This reform was carried out by SEBI and it was done well back in 1996. Before that, we were having something known as share certificates. So shares were held in physical form. So before 1996, we have share certificates or you can understand this as shares which are held in physical form. So let us say you are applying in an IPO and you are allotted shares. Then a company will give you a share certificate. Right in that certificate, it will be written that this is to certify that so and so person is holding so many number of shares in our company. The face value of the share will be printed. You know, a proper certificate will be given to you. Now, these are shares in physical form. Let us say I want to sell these shares. If I have to sell these shares, then the shares have to be transferred in the name of the new buyer. So the share certificate has to be handed over to the new buyer. Not only that, the company also has to update in its books that who is the new owner. So when I sell the share, I will have to execute what is known as a transfer deed. So what I will do is I will execute a transfer deed. I will basically as a seller, I am informing the company that see so many shares were held by me and now these shares I'm selling away to so and so person. So please record in your books the name of this new person as the new owner of the shares. I will execute a transfer deed. I will attach the share certificate and this is how the share certificate will get transferred in the name of the new buyer. You know, on the back side of the share certificate, the name of the new buyer will be written. So the share certificate will not change. It is not that I sell the shares and the company will issue a new share certificate to the new buyer. No, it is that same share certificate. So I first apply in the IPO shares are allotted to me these shares are as i said in form of paper it's a sheet of paper basically it's a share certificate and whoever's name at the back side whoever's name appears last that will be considered to be the latest owner of that particular share now you can just imagine if a company has issued the shares and the share certificate has been printed and let us say it has already been 10 or 15 years back so 10 years back, a share certificate was issued. You can just imagine what will be its condition right now. See, ultimately, it's a sheet of paper. So what will happen is there will be normal uh, decay over a period of time. The certificate can even get torn. As I said, the certificate has to be transferred in favor of the new buyer. So I'm supposed to post that share certificate. During the post, it's quite possible that the share certificate might get lost or the share certificate gets stolen or someone right with a very creative mind is coming up with a fake share certificate. So these are the problems which are there when shares are held in physical form. So way back in 1996, SEBI decided that we do away with shares in physical form, right? So we want to remove shares in physical form and instead we have moved over to shares in electronic form. So we want shares now in electronic form. This is what has paved the way for dematerialization in India. So now we have done away with share certificates. Shares are now held in electronic form. Just as we transfer money from one bank account to another, 
Similarly, securities which are dematerialized can be moved from one DMET account to another DMET account. Now, for the purpose of just a second, for the purpose of dematerialization, we are having two depositors in India. Try to understand the structure which is there. At the top will be the depository. Depository is the, uh, what you can say, the entity that is considered to be the beneficial owner of the shares. So depository is basically responsible for the safekeeping of the shares in electronic form. In India, we are having two depositories. Okay, two depositories. One is NSDL, another is CDSL. So we have two depositories in India, NSDL and CDSL. You have National Securities Depository Limited and you have Central Depository Services Limited. These are the two depositories in India. These depositories are working as the topmost organization which will be responsible, as I said, for the safekeeping of your shares which are in electronic form. But then for a country as large as India, only two depositories naturally will be insufficient. So these depositories, right? You can imagine the depositories as some kind of head office. And then these depositories, okay, they are having, uh, let us say, branches. Think in that way, that they are having branches. These are nothing but depository participants we will call them as depository participants in the stock market jargon they are popularly known as dp any bank can act as a dp similarly a financial institution can act as a dp even the trading members trading members means the brokers even the brokers can also act as a depository participant so the main agency is the depository and the depository is offering its services to the public at large through depository participants. So when you are opening a DP, uh, DMET account, you are basically opening a DMET account with a depository participant. Either the depository participant will be associated with NSDL or the depository participant will be associated with CDSL. The services provided by NSDL and CDSL are exactly the same. So in case if a question is arising in your mind that which is a better depository, there is no such thing in India, right? NSDL, CDSL, they offer the same type of service. They are basically more or less very homogeneous institutions. So whether you are selecting a DP who is operating under NSDL, or under CDSL will make no difference at all. So we don't have to make any choice over here. If you are having, for example, a bank account with SBI or a bank account with a BOB, then, and you are comfortable with your bank, then you can even make your bank the depository participant. If you are more comfortable with your broker and that broker is also working as a DP, fine, you can even open a bank, uh, sorry, a DMET account with your broker. Right. Or if you are tax savvy, then we even have depository participants which are offering online services. It is for us to really decide. So, as we were saying earlier, you have to open a DMET account. The DMET account will be basically with a depository participant. And the depository participant, as I suggested earlier, will be working either under NSDL or will be working under CDSL. Whenever you buy shares, right? Whenever you buy shares, you have to provide a written, uh, uh, sorry, whenever you sell shares, you have to provide a written instruction for the same. And the moment you will of, uh, uh, give a written instruction for the same, shares will move from one DMIT account to another DMIT account. Just as we issue a check and money gets transferred from one bank account to another, similarly over here. When you are buying shares, shares will be credited in your DMIT account. When you are selling shares, shares will be debited in your DMIT account. And then from time to time, you will be also receiving, uh, uh, say, a statement from your depository. In that statement, you will get all the information. 
what are the number of shares that you are holding in different companies what was the opening balance during the period how many shares you have sold during the period how many shares you have purchased and finally what is the closing balance so just as we receive a bank statement for our current account you will similarly receive a statement from the cdsl or the nsdl so once you are receiving that statement you should just scrutinize the statement <clears throat> we have to basically identify if there are any errors mostly there won't be and you can very safely rely on the services which are provided by them so all the hardships which were there earlier with respect to the physical form of the securities those hardships have been remarkably removed now our shares are in electronic form and that's what i was saying even earlier just as banks are to cash and deposits similarly you have a depository which is to the shares and other securities so it has become that much easier now for us to trade in the primary market as well as to trade in the secondary market thanks to this important reform carried out by c press the bell icon on the youtube app and never miss another update